Welcome to this video in which we do an example of using complex power to find a couple of things about the source in this circuit. Uh, we'll determine the average power delivered by the source, we'll determine the power factor of the load, and we'll determine the reactive power delivered by the source. And we'll do all of this by uh, uh, finding the complex power um, that is delivered by the source. So in order to find the complex power delivered by the source, we need to know the voltage across the source, which we do. And we also need to know the current being delivered by the source, which we don't know. So the first thing to do is to convert our voltage source into a phaser. And we see from our uh, voltage or you know, from our voltage source expression that omega is 377. This corresponds roughly to uh, 60 hertz. And with this we can then um, turn this into a phaser of 170 volts at an angle of zero. Okay, the next thing we need to do well, our goal, our short-term goal now is to find the current going into the load, because once we've got the voltage across the load, which would be this, it's given by our 170 at an angle of zero, and the current, then we can find the complex power, and from the complex power we can find all sorts of useful stuff. We can find the power factor, we can find the uh, average power delivered to the load, find the reactive power, and so on. So the approach we'll use to, um, to solve for I is uh, convert the inductor into an, an impedance and then we see that we have an inductor and a resistor in parallel. We'll convert that into an equivalent impedance. Uh, then we have that in series with 5 ohms so we'll convert the whole thing into an equivalent impedance and then uh, from that it'll be easy to find I and then we can find the complex power. So let's see, um, the equivalent impedance of our inductor, or I'm sorry, the impedance of our inductor is J omega times 0.04 Henry's and if I work this out I get that this is um, J 15.08 ohms. Okay, if I've calculated that correctly. So we'll change this to J15.08. And now the next thing to do is to find the equivalent impedance of everything that's connected to the source. So this is going to be Z equivalent. It will be the 5 ohm resistor, that's this guy, plus the parallel combination of the inductor and the 10 ohm resistor, which would be J15.08 times 10, this is ohms, ohms, over 10 ohms plus J15. 15.08 ohms. And so uh, we'll go to Wolfram Alpha to uh, do this computation. And so we have 5 plus I15.08 times 10 divided by 10 plus I 15.08. And Wolfram Alpha chugs on it for a minute and basically gives us uh, a result that's 11.95 ohms plus uh, 4.61, J 4.61 ohms. And it also gives it to us some polar coordinates, uh, which is useful. So it's 12.80 ohms 
at an angle of 21.1 degrees. So if we go back to our picture here, we can write this as 11.95 ohms plus J 4.61 ohms. And in polar form, this is 12.80 ohms at an angle of 21.1 degrees. So our current, we can now find, it will be the voltage, which is 170 volts at an angle of zero, divided by this equivalent impedance, which is 12.8 ohms at an angle of 21.1. And uh, this turns out to be 13.3 amps at an angle of minus 21.1 degrees. Okay, so this is useful. Uh, we'll make a note of this up here. This is 13.3 amps at an angle of minus 21.1 degrees. Okay, now at this point we can compute the complex power and from the complex power we can then find uh, the uh, average power, the reactive power, and the power factor. So uh, let's see, complex power. We've in a previous video denoted it as S and the definition of the complex power uh, for sinusoidal steady state is one half times the voltage, which is 170 at an angle of zero, times the complex conjugate of the current. And so I get the complex conjugate of the current by changing the sign of the angle of the current. Okay, and so when I work this out, I will have, um, let's see, 11, so 1 half times 170 times 13.3, if I've done this correctly, is 11.30 at an angle of 0 plus 21.1, 21.1 degrees. Okay, and I can also write this, uh, we can have uh, Wolfram Alpha give it to us in uh, rectangular coordinates. Okay, so I'm doing E raised to the power of I to the 21.1, that's the number of degrees, then converting from degrees to radians. And uh, the rectangular coordinate versions of this are uh, 1054 ohms plus J407 ohms. That's given by this result guy. And so we can write this down here as 1054 ohms plus J407 ohms. Okay, so that's the complex power. And now, with the complex power, we can find all sorts of useful stuff. The average power is given by the real part of the complex power. So, the average power is the actual power that's dissipated in the resistors. Um, and this is the average power that our source has to supply. Okay. The reactive power, 
is given by the imaginary part. Actually, let's back up the average power we typically call P. The reactive power and uh, let's see, I just screwed up on units. I'll get there in just a sec. The reactive power we call Q. Okay, let's clean up these units. That was an awful oversight. This, since it's in power, is watts. The reactive power we could measure in watts, but we measure it in volt amp reactive. Okay, and the reason for that is the average power is indeed a power. I can measure the heat that's coming off of the resistors and verify that the total heat coming off the resistors is 1,054 watts. Uh, the volt times amps reactive, uh, basically this represents power that the source and the uh, inductor are exchanging. That does not uh, get dissipated as uh, energy, or I'm sorry, as heat in the resistors. Okay, so we have then the average power and the reactive power. Uh, we can also find the power factor. The power factor is the cosine of this angle. So it's 21.1 degrees. And if we work that out, we get a power factor of 0.933. Okay. Um, some uh, questions will actually have you find the power factor first, from which you can find um, things like the average power and the reactive power. Just as an example of that, if I wanted to find the average power using this power factor, uh, the average power would be given by P is one half times the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current times the power factor. Okay, so again this is the magnitude of the voltage, the magnitude of the current, and this is the power factor. And if you work that all out, you should get something that looks like 1054. Okay, well hopefully this uh, video has been useful. Uh, the primary goal here is to show you an example in which we compute complex power fact or the complex power and then show you the different uh, things we can compute from the complex power. So we'll talk to you later.